This is the Holy Gospel according to John, the 12th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Now, among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very I, truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it. And those who, have, who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now, my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world, and now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. As you know, our theme during this Lenten season is Seed of Joy. And today's specific theme is vocational joy. So we think about vocations or perhaps professions, jobs, things that we do. Raise your hand if you've ever had a job. Raise your hand if you've had a job that you absolutely loved and it was perfect for you. Oh, less hands. Raise your hand if you've had a job that you hated. Yeah, mine was waitress. I'm not good at that. Um, Yeah, we all do. Raise your hand if you have a hobby or something that you absolutely love to do and you do it in your spare time because it makes you feel so fulfilled. Yeah. Well, these are types of vocations. A vocation is one of those things that fulfills us, that makes us happy. The thing that something makes us want to do and that we're good at. You know, I have a few things that I absolutely would love to do. Um, Watercolor. (laughs) I'm not an artist. I can't do anything. My daughter's the artist. Lots of things that I can't do, they do not fulfill me. But one thing that I do that is not my profession, but I'm called to do it, is to garden. And it just fulfills this need in me. And maybe it's, um, you know, people who know me would say that it's about, you know, playing in the mud. And it probably is. I have these, you know, kind of big red garden boots and I get to tromp through things and whatever. It's, it's wonderful. I absolutely love it. And because I was a science teacher, there's just something amazing in looking at what I'm doing outside in the dirt. In fact, when my um, children were young, I had three different, three different gardens, yes. 
I had a rose garden. I had a vegetable garden. I had an herb garden. And it was just amazing. Now, were they all successful? No. Did they all fulfill me? Yes, I got to be outside and growing things. But I had to think, because as I'm planting these seeds, I'm seeing things that are really different. You take this tiny little thing, it looks like a sesame seed, and it's a radish seed, and you sprinkle that. And then you've got these bigger seeds that are cucumber seeds, and then you've got tomato seeds, and then you've got this one and this one. And I thought, well, how does it know what it's going to grow into, what it's going to be when it grows up? How does it know? And I couldn't help but think, well, my goodness, that's absolutely amazing. But in my tenure as a science teacher for sixth grade, I did experiments with seeds. And one of those things, and believe it or not, they really liked it, we dissected a lima bean. We dissected it. And when you cut a lima bean open, you know, it comes out like this, and you'll see like this. And you'll see on one side, there is this big white thing over here. And then you'll see a little tiny stem or something poking up that way. It could be the root, I don't know. And then you see these really, really, really little leafy things. And when you plant it in the ground, it grows a lima bean plant. And it's absolutely amazing. And everything that that plant needs is there. Because if it's in the dark, it can't do photosynthesizing. So how is it going to eat? Well, it's in there. Everything it needs to survive until it can come up and make food of its own. And then when it's make done, it produces lima beans. Same thing with apples. Same thing with cucumbers. But how does it know? Well, basically, I know there's a scientific reason for it, but even though I taught science, I'm not a scientist, I could only say, God did it. God made the lima bean know to grow to be a lima bean, the best lima bean it could be, to produce more lima beans. And for the zinnia, you plant that seed, it's going to grow and it's going to produce zinnias and all of those things. The cucumbers, the same. The apples, the same. And it's going to produce flowers and fruit and more seeds. Because that is the vocation of what is in that seed. And now we're coming into the first lesson. And we hear God saying, the days are surely coming. That doesn't sound good, does it? The days are surely coming. They're coming. And I will make a new covenant with my people. Now, where are we in Jeremiah? We are at the place where the people are coming back from exile in Babylon because they couldn't be good. They couldn't obey God. They got into a war with Assyria, and they decided that instead of trusting in God, even after God had given them everything, they'd go ahead and, you know, fight Assyria and ally with somebody. So they ended up in Babylon. Now they're coming back. They're coming back to total destruction. Things are destroyed. It looks like the Ukraine. It looks like Gaza Strip. There's nothing left. They have to rebuild. They have to start from scratch. And here's God saying, the days are surely coming. But what does he say? I'm making a new covenant. I'm making a new covenant because you broke the last one. Yes, 
He's giving them a second chance. He's giving to them that second chance. And what does he say about it? He says, I will put my law within them, his new covenant. My law. My law that tells you everything about what it's like to live in God's kingdom, in God's way to love God, to love one another, to live in a land of justice and peace and all of that stuff that we don't see. I'm going to put that in you, like that little thing in the seed. In fact, I, God, I'm going to write it on your heart. I'm writing it on your heart. It's right there. And I will be your God. I'm not giving up on you. And they shall be my people. Wow. And not only that, he says they don't have to ask each other to know God. For they shall all know me from the greatest to the least. They know me. And, you know, that takes us right into our gospel lesson because to know is to understand, to really get the picture, to be able to get the gist of things and just see it. And here we have the Greeks. Now, we have to understand, the Greeks are not just Gentiles. They're really, 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 really Gentiles. They're not even Jewish, like Jesus and his disciples. And here comes these Greeks at the festival of the Passover. Remember, Jesus is in Jerusalem for the last time. Here they come, and they tell Philip, Sir... We would see Jesus. We want to see Jesus. They want to know Jesus. They want to know God. They want to understand Jesus. They want to understand God. They want to fully embrace what Jesus is about, what God is about, what it means for them. Sir, we would see Jesus. And so Philip and Andrew go over, and they talk to Jesus. Now, mind you, there's a crowd around. We don't know where the Greeks went, but we have to assume that they're still standing about. And instead of really answering their questions, which Jesus does a lot, he doesn't really answer questions. He kind of puts stuff out there, and we have to think about it. Instead of doing that, Jesus talks about seeds, Jesus talks about seeds. And he talks about how seeds must be put into the earth and die so that they can produce life. He talks about how nothing that we cling to in this life, that we love this life, is going to give us that satisfaction because if we live for this life, We're going to miss out on something bigger, which is God's life. God's life that God promised. God's life that God wrote in us, on our hearts. God's life of the kingdom promise today. We're going to miss out on that. But then he goes on to say, I, when I am lifted up, I will draw all people to me, to me, when I am lifted up. Wow. Well, how does that fit with vocation? Well, think about that. We are God's people. 
We are the people in whom God put his law, which is a kingdom view, which is that life of justice, equity, equality, within enough. It is that life where there is no sadness, where there is peace, there's love, honor. And God remembers our sins no more. God has already put that within us, just like the seed. God gathers us to God's self, just as God was gathering his people into Jerusalem to rebuild, to restructure, to make things better. And he says to his people, I will be their God, but they will be, they shall be, a promise God never breaks, they shall be my people, just as we are. We've been claimed and named by God in the waters of baptism in that name of Christ marked on our forehead and we have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and just like a seed we've been given everything that we need to fulfill our vocation. And our vocation is to be what God wants us to be. To grow to produce the fruits of the kingdom, to lift up Christ so that not only do all people see Jesus, but they are drawn to him and gathered into his arms. Every one of us here is God's hands, feet, eyes, mouth, voice in this world. Into our hearts, God has placed everything that we need to fulfill his vocation of being these things on earth. And our task isn't to go out and think a vocation is I have to be a pastor, I have to be a Sunday school teacher, I have to be uh, an engineer, or any of those things, or I have to sing in the choir, even though all of those are great. Our vocation is wherever we are, whatever we do, and however we live, that we lift up Christ for others so that they too may see Jesus. God's given us everything we need to do to fulfill this vocation and to be the one that we were meant to be and to live in the world that God wants for us. He's given us everything and there is real joy in that vocation. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please stand as you are able for our hymn of the day. Mm -hmm. 